Okay, today is day 12. I got my wood in from Stunt Hanger Hobby. Uh, we're going to lay out the top block. Now, it was calling for a molded top block, but it's a whole lot easier to go ahead and carve it, especially when I have such good wood. I got a one inch piece here. 3 by 36, it weighs 127 grams, and I have a 3 quarter inch piece here that weighs 99 grams. So we're going to use a 3 quarter inch piece, because that's what it's calling for anyway. And <clears throat> part of the flair of this model was the certain things that Tom did. Like I did on my Monado, it has an upturned instrument panel spot in the view slot. So we're going to cut that at the nose. So we need to approximate where it goes. And it goes right here. And we're going to draw a line. These little, these little things, uh, they do make a difference, as far as I'm concerned. And ahead of this line, the block is only one half inch. So we're only going to cut a quarter inch sliver off of this line. And we're going to cut it off. in this manner. I have a piece of wood that I've already stripped to half an inch. I'm going to lay that on there. So I got a line and I'm going to use my band saw to saw this line on. And this gives you the starting point Where to go from, and I'll show you that right there. You'll notice here this line swoops and comes straight, and the line straight across. We're going to put this on the band saw, and I'm going to saw that off, and that will give you the very front of the instrument panel. That's a good thing I double checked. I have it too far back. It needs to be right there. Missed by an inch on my line. Measure twice, cut once. You only got one chance, especially when the wood's this good. So draw this line here, this curve. And you would think, well that's <laughs> that's no big deal. Well it is when you look at the finished model. This this step here in front of the instrument panel <clears throat> really makes a, a nice appearance. So I'm gonna cut this and I'll be back in a moment. All right, there was no need for you to show me, uh, for me to show you how I did it. I just uh, did it on the bandsaw. I removed this piece of wood, and we now have <clears throat> the shape that I wanted. And uh, hopefully you can see that. And it comes up in this direction here. And uh, just take a block and kind of sand out the saw marks, level it out. And next, we're going to place it on the fuselage. Uh, I'm going to tack it.
right in the center. Still need to make a plywood nose ring. Tack it on the nose. Now you could hold it down, but because we're going to draw a line on it, it's best to tack it, and that way it won't move. And I always like to get a weight before I start hollowing. So now we have it tacked on there. And I get my free Shapers Hobby pens. Being careful not to push the uh, fuselage in. And we're going to leave the line on when we saw this. I hope my Polyspan how-to video helped help some people. So now we have it drawn on there and we're going to cut it back off. I know you say, well why did I tack it on there? Well, so it wouldn't move. <clears throat> and we'll bandsaw this off. So. Instead of running the camera, I'm just going to band saw it off. Alright, took it five minutes, saw the uh, material off. We got kind of a baseball bat. But that's not what I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk about the material that actually came off this block. Because it's so good, the wood is so good, I'm going to take these two pieces, I'm going to laminate it together, and I'm going to take it on my table saw and square up the, uh, the cuts. And we'll have a piece of wood that's uh, super light, but uh, it's an inch, inch and a quarter wide by ever how long this is. And uh, of course, we'll lose a little bit in the in the milling of it. But instead of throwing it out, you know, we can go ahead and laminate these two pieces together and use it somewhere else. Because I see no no reason why this wouldn't be a good piece of wood. So just a just a thought. I have a a big scrap pile here. <clears throat> so the next thing I have to do is I have to cut a nose ring because we're going to have to get the motor mounted and the nose ring put on before I sand the uh, the top block. But this is this is our progress so far, and it only took. 15 minutes. Tack that on, take the plane, it'll take maybe, a, I would say this fuselage will take possibly an hour to, uh, to rough out. And, and then we'll go ahead and uh, hollow it. I don't, I don't foresee this taking uh, much time at all to do. These, these airplanes are just so easy to build, it's unbelievable. I need something with more of a challenge. Maybe I ought to try indoor free flight. <laughs> so, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, here's what we've done since I uh, cut the camera. I cut out a nose ring, like I told you. I mounted the motor engine and uh, glued the nose ring on. We have to we have to have a starting point and that's kind of important. Kind of eyeball it, make sure it's completely down. It is. It's good. 
So now we're going to take the uh, motor out and tack the top block on. We'll draw a center line down the whole length of the fuselage. Because this fuselage is very, I don't know, has a unique shape. It's, uh, it's like an egg. Very shapely, shapely. And that there is a, a straight backbone, so to speak, on top and bottom. I do have it on the bottom, but I want to make sure that I get it on the top as well. So remove the motor. And we're just going to tack this on there so there's no need to epoxy those motor mounts in, or the blind nuts in yet. Now because I have motor off, off the rest, I need to angle this uh, nose ring area a little bit so I hit it with a belt sander. That's good. And uh, tack it together. Just a few tacks every six, eight inches. One in the front. The problem with tacking is that where you cut it apart, there's always a ding spot in the wood. I, I don't know any other way to get around that, but you got to have it tacked together if you're going to do a nice job. I had a little bit left over on the end. I'm going to go ahead and put it up on the disc center and sand that quarter inch off the tail here. Let me zoom in so you can see. I cut it a little long right here. So it needs to that quarter inch sanded off. No sense in cutting it. We'll just buzz it up on the disc sander. It'll be off in two shakes. for government work. So, get a ballpoint pen and I'll mark the center of the fuselage at the tail post. In the center of the fuselage at the nose ring. A yardstick. There we go. Lightly draw a line on it. You don't want to bent the wood. 
because we're going to end up sanding that line off. such. Now, if you look at it, it doesn't look in the center. Well, it's not in the center of the block, it's in the center of the fuselage, because this block has been cut oversized and it's rather large, about an eighth of an inch over on the back on this side right here. So, first thing we need to do is we need to plane this down so it's even with the fuselage sides before we can start shaping but we're going to have to get another tack on here. To... Not holding very well. Let's see where we are for weight. We know the cow is going to be an, about an ounce. So we'll, we'll add this piece as well. Okay. Go to the calculator. So it's seven and a half ounces here. So with with the uh, ounce cow, that's eight ounces. Well, guaranteed, this top block is not going to weigh. Eight ounces when I'm, or seven ounces when I'm done. So I'm going to make a mark here. This is uh, 191 grams before hollowing, and we're going to try to get that at least. I wish. Let's see, 191. Let's. I remember what it was. It was five four. Clear. Clear. 191. Divide by that block is only an ounce and a half now, so we're going to try to get it down to a half ounce. You notice I'm using my calculator here, I can even make a phone call on it. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Credit card reader. Uh, GPS, driving in the car, tells you where to go. It's unreal. It'll talk to you. So, we got 191. We'll weigh it up in a minute. So what I'm going to do, first off, is i got to find the plane again. I don't know what I did with it. There it is. And we're done with the plans. We don't, uh, I know what it looks like now. I just, I knew what it looked like before we started, but I wanted to show you how I get that nice fairing on the uh, inside of the cockpit. So, we're going to put this stuff up. start to shape up the fuselage. Clear off the workbench of any hazardous material. Meaning hard objects. What I'm going to do is, I have a mover's blanket, I'm going to put 
put the mover's blanket down. Remember, we're on day 12. Wings covered. Elevator stabilizers covered. Rudders covered. Flaps are covered. Ready to install. All we're missing is this fuselage. And I'm going to get that done today. <clears throat> or get it ready to be put together. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plane this down parallel with the fuselage sides. Remember what I showed you about planing. You don't want your plane to take an eighth of an inch off at a time. You only want it to take a few thousand. A couple of reasons. Better control, better cut, easier to cut, and takes less time. material to come off because when I drew that up I cut outside the line because I didn't didn't want to mess up my one chance one piece of wood is all I had I only ordered one that other piece of wood got three quarters actually for a different projects When I get this done, I'll show you that the line is in the center. I'm not sure, but I think there's some balsamites or something that are biting me. That I'm becoming allergic to balsa wood because it sure has been making me itch in the last couple builds. Ever since I started the shoestring. Now if you notice, that line is right down the center of that piece of wood because we plane that piece of wood equal with the fuselage sides. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to mark off where the rudder goes. I'm going to do it a little different than what the plan showed. They have the rudder sitting on top of the uh, elevator stabilizer. We're going to go ahead and let the top block sit on top of the elevator stabilizer and recess this down into that block until it's on top of the elevator. So, approximately uh, approximately to there. I 
will be cutting that on the bandsaw, but I'm not going to do it now. We're going to mark it and stay away from it as far as the shaping goes until it's glued together. This will make it stronger. So what we're going to do is we're going to notch that rudder into that. I like that idea a lot better. Okay, on this fuselage, it's tapered up into a teepee, basically. It has kind of a hard, hard line all the way up, so we're going to start planing it. Into that teepee shape. And it, it goes all the way down into the fuselage. hours and hours of this uh, this shaping or I can cut the camera I really think cutting the camera for this boring operation is better than doing like Wendy did and let it run on and on and on so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to cut the camera when I get this shaped I'll be back because it's all, it's just repetition, it's uh, using your eye to get this shape, stay away from the center line, it's been a while since I had an airplane this, this shapely, it's very very, very shapely. So, we'll be back in a moment when I get this done. Might take an hour. So, seen a few. Okay, I'm still <clears throat> shaping. It's uh, coming along pretty nice got a real nice shape to it so far. It's very oval in the back back here. I'm still working on the uh, <clears throat> the area up here. I don't know what, uh, like I've said before, I don't know exactly what you guys want to see. If you want to see me sand this, because it, it takes hours to, uh, you know, this is what takes the time, the detailing. The actual putting things together don't, doesn't take long. It's the uh, detail sanding. And if you want this to look really nice, it just takes time. My uncle used to say that to me all the time. He was, he was a flyer too. It just takes time. And uh, I've got the center line. I've uh, started to shape the nose. When I get it closer, I'll put the spinner on it. We'll sand it with the spinner on so that the nose ring blends right into the spinner. You kind of scratch up the spinner, but it's going to get painted anyway. So I'm even. Going to, when I paint the pilot, Tom took a one hair paintbrush and put bloodshot eyes on his pilot. I'm going to try that. I don't know if I can do it, but you know what the heck? If you don't try, you won't get anywhere.
working. I'm still trying to figure out how I want to terminate the back half of this canopy or cockpit area. Tom just had it square. I, I don't like that, so I'll probably make it round and make a lip on it. The uh, The cockpit area will be done just as my Monado was. I know what it got to paint the inside first. It's a it's a big process to do that, but the end result is so nice. Anybody that's seen the Monado, they just they love it because I took the time to uh, to do these little things. Using 80 grit, I use 30 grit to to shape it round. The plane and 30 grit. I'm just uh, continually going down in sandpaper grade. We're not sanding lengthwise because that'll put flats in it. We're sanding around the beam of the fuselage. Sanding an airfoil into it. And trust me, this fuselage has got way more shape than I normally put in a uh, put in an airplane, but I want it, like I said, I want it to be just like the original. I have yet to see anybody with a Continental at a contest that's built with the same shape as Tom has. Sorry, Ty. <laughs> Set this baby down for classic people are going to go wow because it definitely it's definitely right out of the 60s the way it's done so I will continue to sand and shape there's no need to watch the hours of this when I get it close I'll cut the block off, we'll hollow it out, and we'll see what it weighs. So, we'll see you in a bit. Well, earlier I showed the uh, the reading of the top block, and I didn't show how I did it. Because it's all labor, and it, and it would be impossible to show on the video. Just shape it and hollow it. I mean... There's not much more than that than the sanding, but here's here's where we are. It's got a real nice shape to it. We're still on day 12. It's the end of day 12. I'm not going to get much more done today. I will probably show you how I'm going to lay up the cowl, uh, which is not a not a super big deal. If you remember, I told you that I was going to cut in to the rudder area. Let me zoom in on that. And that's this mark right here. And I slotted that so the rudder fits down into it. Now the plans don't show it that way, but that's how I've done it. And I, I feel that's a, a lot more solid than what they had. They just had the rudder glued on top of the elevator uh, with some putty on top of that, and I didn't, I didn't feel that was a, a good way to do things, so I did that, and when I get that glued in, I'll, I'll fare that in. I fit the engine in, and uh, sanded the shape close 
to the spinner. I've uh, shaped the fuselage, the, the roundness here, and I don't dare go any farther until I get the wing installed. So the only thing that's left to do is uh, build a cowl, and and I don't even really have to do that, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do that on this one. Is I'm gonna build a cowl first before I install the wing, just to make it easier to to handle. Uh, coming out real nice. <clears throat> Fuselage is about five and a half ounces. I got the top block hollowed and carved down to um, half an ounce. It was 16 grams, so a little bit over a half an ounce. And the bottom was seven grams. So it's very thin. I'm real happy with it. I'm, I'm looking for this airplane to come in on way under uh, 50 ounces, you know, we're talking mid-40s. And that'll be a good weight for this size airplane. Randy Smith uh, figured the wing area out. It's about 640. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's a good size wing. The wing is all done. And... Uh, the elevator stabilizer is all done. All our components are done. This is day 12. I told you about the clevis that I was going to use. And I used that brass clevis and wrapped it and uh, put heat shrink on it. I think that'll be fine. And our wing is completely done. That includes the flaps and everything. This wing is just at 14 ounces. Flaps, bell crank, tip box, covered, and three coats of dope. It's just 14 ounces, so this is going to be a, a fairly light airplane. Uh, usually these wings are between 15 and 16 ounces at this stage here. So we keep the keep the finish light, which I will. It should be a nice airplane. I'm not going to get any uh, any filler on it. It's just going to be a uh, clear dope. So that's basically where I'm at. <clears throat> I'll cut the camera. This, this is the end of the of day 12. I probably won't post anything till day 13 when I make the cowl and uh, edit the video. So we, we miss the day of uh, posting. I think before I go to bed tonight, I'll put another coat of dope on the wing, top and bottom of the wing, and that'll get us one coat closer to finish. Because like I said, you got to have at least three coats of dope on the, on the poly span. And we're probably, with as thin as that dope was, we're probably at two coats now. And you really can't, you're not supposed to stand this until after three coats, but... I'll go over and detail it. So, I'll uh, get back with you tomorrow. So, you have a nice evening. Tight lines.